Welcome to the new Shadow Foam office, finally completed. The unit's not fully completed, we've probably got another one or two videos of finishing the, uh, the outside of the unit, but the office, where the, uh, the heart of the operations is all, is all finished. Come and have a look, we've finished these desks off uh, this week, um, and obviously you've, you've seen the conference room in the last video, and it's all looking good. The one thing that's not looking as good as I'd hoped, however, is our camera equipment. Uh, we made this case, uh, the Peli 1510, uh, probably about a year ago now, and it's got an easy peel layer on the top with two handles, and then underneath we've got some Shadow Foam Original, and this was great for pretty much most of the year. It fitted our Canon M50, the Canon M3, tripod, and a few other bits and bobs, um, including two lav mics, but then over the past year we've upgraded some of our gear. We've got new Rode um, lav mics that are smaller, We've got another Canon M50, and we've also got, got these frames that go on the camera, so that doesn't now fit in this case. So that brings me to the Nanak 940 case. This is currently used as my tool case, and we cut this uh, in a video about six to eight months ago, which is linked here. We'll link it above here. You can have a look about how we did this. And it's been a great, it's been a great toolkit for me. Um, I'm an engineer by trade, and I only ever really do site work now every now and then. So I need something I can transport. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of items in here that I don't really need. I never really use them. So I could probably condense this kit down um, into the Peli case. And then we can use this one for our camera equipment. Right, so now we've got our empty case back again. We need some foam inserts for it. And we have prepared some earlier. What we've gone for, we've, we've already cut these down to size. But we're going to be putting some quite deep items. We're looking at the deepest item is going to be this tripod, which is a good 80, 90 mil. So what we've gone for is a 30 mil red top base layer, cut to size, and a 50 mil red top. And that gives us a nice 80 mil base to work from, um, which we can put all of the deeper items in. So there's a few of these that are standing out to me. The big gorilla pod and the other little tripod will go in the base. Then we've got a 30 mil layer. And because this is a lift out section, these bottom sections will never lift out, but this one will lift out. So what we've done is, we pre-cut a little handle, and all the, the way we do this is we just literally cut around a lens, cut a little hand held, a little hand um, handle, and we only need one on one side because we're going to have our batteries in here and all of our smaller items, and the boards are quite solid, so we don't need a handle on both sides, and that will just sit on the top, so that's going to be all of our slimmer items, and then our camera and our lenses are going to go in the 50mm top layer, and we've put another handle in that as well. So that's all our foam. The next big job is figuring out the layout, and the layout, typically the thing that takes the longest, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. I want it to look all really good and all nicely uh, organized. So uh, we won't bore you with that, and we'll cut to a montage. I think we've finally got some sort of layout. Um, it's quite painful figuring out a layout because it just takes a lot of time figuring out. Um, but one thing that we've done which should make this a lot more organized is we've taken all the little bits and pieces. We had loads of little adapters, um, little like uh, clamps and little Allen keys and screws that we, we want to include because they're part, they go with some of the other accessories. We've also got lots of leads and we've got some cleaning cloths. Now, none of that stuff cuts in foam very well. Um, so I picked up these little plastic containers. Uh, they're listed as playing card holders, I think they are, but they're only cheap on Amazon. And in here we've got the little audio um, connectors for the lav mics. We've got these little clamps that go with um, our like extension arms over here. We've got, these are all like adapters, quarter inch to three eighths adapters. And then we've got cleaning cloths. And then these two tins, we've got um, our lav mics. We're currently using a lav mic, so we'll have three lav mics in there. And then in here we've got our charge lead, so it's two USB-C chargers, which are for uh, the Rode lav mics that I've got on now. And then we've got a micro USB for these two chargers here. And like I say, cutting leads in is never fun, so having a little tin like that, and then we're going to print some labels, is great. Uh, in here we've also got all of, basically this is a 30 mil layer, so we've put all of the kind of thin items, because we want these to sit pretty much flush down so the next layer can sit on top of it. Uh, this is the base layer. 
we've gone through all of our bulky stuff in here and we've got the two chargers for the lights because they're these sometimes you can think of these as quite a slim item but in reality it's as deep as its maximum point so it's it's a really deep 16 mil item that is so they have to go in the base and what we'll do is we'll tuck the cables underneath to make those look nice and tidy so that's the base layout and then here we're actually using one of our cameras now to shoot this video uh, and then this one I'm going to cut in first and then we're going to put that on a time lapse but we're going to have two cameras in the middle both in frames and then we've got the lenses going all around with a lav mic and then this is the shotgun mic which goes on the top sometimes so without further ado let's cut the first item in and then um, I'll show you how we cut the first item and then we'll cut to a time lapse and show you the whole process so we're going to start with this top layer and once you've kind of figured out your layout we're going to have um, five lenses across the top and the third the fifth lens is on the camera we're shooting with so we'll have five lenses and we've got two long lenses at the side sides and then we'll have our two cameras in the middle so now all we do is we take our uh, this scalpel is included in our cutting kits so uh, we take this put a blade on it and then we just trace cut around the item and we don't have to cut very deep on the first pass because you're just using it like a pen you're just basically marking the foam um, but it's an undetectable mark so you're not like if you use a permanent marker some people it marks the foam and it's a lot of the time it's irreversible unless you use something like a whiteboard marker which is always a bit chunky anyway you're um, you risk leaving a permanent mark on the foam so we just use the scalpel itself you shouldn't really be able to see what you've done you know you can't really see any mark there but then if you press down on the foam you'll expose the cut you've made and then all we're doing is cutting down deeper and with this it's a 50 mil sheet and we want to go down 35, um, yeah, a good 35 mil really. This layer is on the top, so the items that are going in it don't have to be um, flush. You don't have to have them flat to the surface. There's nothing going on top of this, so everything can, can sit proud. And in reality, it's nicer if the items sit proud because it makes them easier to grab. And once you've gone all the way around, still, you shouldn't really be able to detect the cut you've made if you've done it nice and neat. And then all we're doing is we're starting one end and we're just pulling back the foam and we're digging our fingers down to, to lift the foam. Now, it doesn't peel like a banana. We get some people will contact us and say it's not peeling as they expect it to. Um, we know we call it easy peel and that's to highlight the fact that it, the fact that it does peel and you don't have to tear it or you don't have to um, cut out the base. But in reality, if it was too easy, it would delaminate and it would all just fall apart and it wouldn't last very long. So we do bond it quite tightly together. And all you're doing is you're pushing your fingers underneath and you're pulling it step by step along. You're working it along. You're not grabbing it at one end and peeling it. You're just working the foam back. Now that's gone down a good 30 mil. So when it comes to peeling back more extra layers, you want to just make sure you've cut all the way. And obviously at this point, I can just go trace cut along and just make sure I've gone all the way through. Not all the way through, all the way through the next layer. You don't really want, you don't want to cut all the way through because you'll lose all the structural integrity and it'll just, the base will fall out. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a little bit extra out at the very top. And I can, I can work this out because it's only that top section of the insert. So we can literally, I'm going to do it away from the table so as not to mark the table. But I can cut that little bit all the way through because it's not going to affect the camera and it's not going to, it won't allow the camera to fall through there'll be enough material there to, um, to support. But I can cut that all the way through that little section. There we go, that's what we want. You can see it poking out the back there. We may as well, we've got two of the exact same camera, so I may as well cut the second one here. Uh, but we won't bore you with that one.
So that probably took about two hours uh, to get all that done, um, and then probably another hour just doing the layout because it's very tricky trying to get everything in uh, and to look nice. But I think we've got a really nice balance now. Uh, we've managed to fit our gorilla pod, um, a slider, a full size tripod, the handle for the camera mount, and the chargers for the lights all in the base, and they're all sat flush. And then in here, this is a 30 mil layer, we've got a monopod and a short tripod. We've got a zoom uh, recorder. We've got the remote for the cameras. And then what we've done is all the little bits and pieces and the wires, we've actually put them in these little plastic containers. Um, we've got adapters and things in that container. We've got some little lint-free cloths here. Uh, this little case here is our SD cards in there. That's fallen out. And then we've got our uh, two battery chargers, which charge from USB. And we've got a dual USB charger here. And then the leads are all in this little tin. Oh no, that's the lav mics actually. We are gonna put labels on these. That's the lav mics. And then that's the uh, two micro USB, two USB-C cables. And then all of our batteries. And we've got a little bit of room to buy a few more. We've got uh, two cameras running, uh, one camera running right now with a battery in it. And then we can buy another three, I think, batteries. And we've got a knife. And then this is a little multi-tool, just in case anyone's wondering what this is. It's made by Small Rig, which is the company that make the frames for these. Uh, so that's that tray, which is great, the 30 mil tray. Push that in there. And then the top one, obviously we've got one camera filming right now. We've got our second camera, so we can have two, two running. We've got a lav mic, and then underneath that one, I think it is, yeah, we've got the cable for it. Uh, and then we've got all of our lenses. Uh, one of them's in use, plus the adapter's in use. So that's great, and then that goes on the top. We also cut a piece of convoluted foam to go in the lid, just to press down you know, on all of these items, make sure they don't fall out. Uh, we had planned on putting these two lights in the top, um, but when all said and done, the lid does close, but it's, it's a bit tight to these and I don't really want to put any extra any pressure on any of the items. So we've got the charge in the base and then likely whenever we go uh, shooting, we'd probably have this and a backpack and then they can go in the backpack. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, I think it's, um, it's, it's all of our gear, it's pretty much everything we use, bar a full size movie tripod and these lights and we have a couple of other lights too they're not the only lights we have so um it's a pretty much most of our gear what do you think uh, what do you think about it what, what color would you go for we've gone for red top but obviously we've got red base we've got loads more stock in right now so we've got all of the colors the only color i think we've still sold out of is, is most of the blues although we do have blue top 50 mil uh, but all the other colors are back in stock we've used our standard 600 by 420 mil sheets here and we've just trimmed them down to fit the case but yeah we're pretty happy with that. So, great stuff. Um, now, poo kits. What the hell is even that? We offered five, we had a competition to win five last week, last last video, and we've got them all here. Um, and now we've had quite a few, I've had a few messages asking me what, what the heck are these, and obviously it's, it was so random. Um, well, it's not random to us, it makes more sense. So, I'm gonna explain what they are. Uh, we went to a show uh, last year called Maker Central, uh, and when uh, we went there, we took free samples to give out, but we wanted to make a gift for some of the key makers on YouTube. And um, we struggled to come up with something that was gonna help them remember us. And the typical kind of uh, pens and uh, gimmicks and key rings, well not gimmicks, but key, this is a gimmick, but key rings that you might get at a show, always you know, just get lost in a bag of goodies. So um, we, we gave this, uh, we, made the, we made these kits. It's the make, it was the Maker Central show we went to. And it says Shadow Foam, a gift to you from Shadow Foam. It says standard exhibition SH1T. And then inside we've put, um, these are, this is like uh, full of sand, this thing, and it stretches and it's like kind of stretchy Armstrong poop. So that's that one. This is like a weird squidgy one with, uh, I don't know what's in that one, but it all squidges around. This is, I don't know, this is like a, it's supposed to look more real. And then this is slime, it's proper horrible, that stuff, but it's like, like brown slime. We know that a lot of you missed out because I thought there was only going to be a couple of people who wanted one and we ended up having about 40 or 50 entries, which is, uh, I thought was pretty good for a, a poo kit. <laughs> so we've, we've dug out, we've got like I say about, we had about 10, I think maybe about 12 or 13 spare, but a couple of them aren't too good condition. But we've got another five to give away anyway. So for anyone who missed out, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel and then just drop a comment in the, um, in the comment section and then we'll know that you're um, in the competition and we'll pick five winners again for next video. Thanks very much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications bell if you can, and then as soon as we put a video live, uh, you're gonna be the first to know about it. We used to post every Friday, but with all of this pandemic going on, 
uh, we're going to be mixing things up and posting at different times as and when we manage to get the videos out so definitely make sure the notification bell's clicked uh, and thanks very much for watching <laughs>